Race number five, it's Australia. Race number 10 for our Singapore viewers. Again, another listed race here over the 2,200 metres. And a lot of these runners went up against each other in the Tattersall's Cup last start. So that is a form line that we can certainly analyse. Now, a horse that's been very consistent in recent times, of course, won the Northern Cup, then finished second the start after behind Drive West. And third last start is Young Lionel. And that's the replay that we're going to take a look at last start in the Tattersall's Cup. Young Lionel de Bang, Rebel Sons made a run at them very quickly though. Raising Dubai back behind them, searching for an opening. And they're followed by Dubai Escapade. Came out sharply underneath Badama Joe. Young Lionel went to Kirov Boy. Rebel Sun raising Dubai, getting balked for run. Dubai Escapade coming. Kirov Boy fighting. Young Lionel Dubai Escapade lunging. Dubai Escapade on the outside. Dive to Kirov Boy. It's a really good performance there by Young Lionel. Consistency is the key for this galloper at the moment. You just know what you're going to get. It can roll forward, is honest, and keeps attacking the line for Lou Luciani. Jared Noss get a ride. A little bit of a concern for mine stepping up to the 2200 metres with the way that conditions are going to be playing as well. But as I said, if you're looking in a field like this for a horse that you just know what you're going to get, Young Lionel is certainly that galloper. One that I was really impressed with from the Tattersall's Cup is number 10, who's to blame for Vaughan Sigley. Takahide Ikenushu will ride on this occasion. Damien Oliver rode in that last start. Carried the 55 kilo, so drops a kilo here to 54. And this horse has been up for a while, but just continues to impress. The turn of foot laid over the, the 2100 metres was impressive. And had it been over 2200 metres, it might have won on that occasion. So I see the step up as a positive, the weight drop as a positive, and the conditions are going to suit more as well. So I think number 10, who's to blame? You'd be getting each way odds for this galloper and I think that she can really play a part in this race for Vaughan Sigley. Barrier 8, a nice draw as well for number 10, who's to blame. I really liked number four as well, Ask Me Nicely last night in the Tattersall's Cup and just didn't offer a lot. Ended up finishing uh, four lengths behind the winner on that occasion in 11th. Was disappointing run, barrier nine, the 56 and a half kilos. Again, condition should suit a horse like Ask Me Nicely and a lot more on this occasion. Building into Perth Cup, we know that this horse has got the class, so I'm expecting big improvement from number four, Ask Me Nicely. We've mentioned young Lionel a little bit earlier. Well, another horse that uh, enjoys this type of distance is number five, Global Flirt for Justin Warwick. Willie White to ride and has had two runs over the 1400 metres and now steps up to the 2200 metres and this horse normally finds a way to win at big odds we saw that last year as well so I think number five Global Flirt ridden by Willie White with the 56 and a half kilos has to be included now that you're getting the step up to the 2200 metres let's take a look at the selections I'm going to be tipping number 10 who's to blame from number four in Ask Me Nicely number two Young Lionel and number five Global Flirt Race number six is Australia. Race number 12 is the Jungle Dawn Classic, a listed event over the 1,400 metres, and we have some class in this race. Wink and a nod has been scratched, but still plenty of class surrounding them in the likes of Ideal Image, Vital Importance, also Vampy Lass and Cool Trade are certainly gallopers to take note of in this race. Ideal Image, return last start, was a really good performance behind Shidel. Attacked the line strongly, lost by a half length, and we're going to take a look at that run now. Into the straight at the 350, he called upon Folds, bet to come at Shidel. The favourite responded though, 200 left to go. Shidel's a length and a half to Folds, bet flat to the floorboards, but here comes Ideal Image with a run. Shidel, the leader, Ideal Image trying hard, but Shidel kept going, will hold it. And Shidel, he sat up on it close to home and it beat Ideal Image. It's a brilliant performance by her on that occasion. She had to sit closer to the speed because as we mentioned, it did suit leaders, leaders on that day, but she was still able to run on strongly, only going down to Shidel by a half length. Now the step up to 1400 metres I see is a big positive, has won over that distance before. Barrier one with the 56 and a half kilos. I think Ideal Image is the one to beat in this race and should be very hard as well, uh, especially over the concluding distances to out sprint this galloper because she has a lot of class about her. Number two, Vampy Lass also comes from that race. Finished 3.8 lengths, so four lengths behind Shidel on that occasion, but did his best work late. Stepping up to the 1400 metres I see is a positive. Has never run any worse than third when second up, so that's another good stat to take a look at and draw nicely in barrier two with the 57 and a half kilos peter hall to ride as well so vampy lass another horse will be getting back and running on strongly one horse that's got plenty of speed and can certainly lead this race is number three cool trade you have a look at the form lines all around wink and a nod there's a lot of class around this galloper has had the two starts over 1400 meters and there's always thoughts that 1400 is, is too far for cool trade but has placed on both of those occasions running third now if it does cross quite easily, which I think she will. I think she can set this speed up nicely and just really back them off as they approach the top of the straight so she's still got a sprint left in her. If that's the case, she can certainly run in the top four in this race and be very hard to beat as well. 
Number 10, Hashtag, also comes out of the jungle. Missed flash time on that occasion to finish two lengths behind Shidel. Has a nice turn of foot, though he does struggle over the 1,400 metres. Had the five starts yet to win. Has placed on three occasions, so does know how to run a drum in this race, but yet to win from five occasions over the 1,400 metres. Let's take a look at the selections, and I'm really keen on number four, Ideal Limit here. From number two, Vampy Lass. Number five, in vital importance, I think will improve stepping up in distance. And number three, Cool Trade. Race number seven, it's Australia. Race number 13 for our Singapore viewers is Yaris Crawford Stakes over the 1,000 metres. A listed event and a lot of runners dropping back from the winter bottom over the 1,200 metres to this 1,000 metre event. There will be fireworks everywhere and it might set itself up for a swooper. We'll have to wait and see. The replay that we're going to take a look at, though, is from the winter bottom stakes. There are a couple of runners to analyse here, but the two that finished off very well, number eight, Mad Dasa, and number 11, Silverstream. They both finished tied fourth. Let's take a look at the run now. And rocking, searching for run, and now to the outside, Waterman's Bay, but Buffering led them at the 250. Brown went to work. The great horse, Buffering, led the way from Mad Azza. Down the outside, here comes Waterman's Bay, mowing turf, Buffering in front, Waterman's Bay running on hard, but Buffering wins the winter bottom again. Buffering again. Two very different performances there, but both very good to watch as well. Now, Mad Dasser is a 1,000 metre specialist, so to see that run over the 1,200 metres in that type of class gallopers, that certainly impressed me. The blinkers go on for this start as well, so a couple of positives. And then a horse like Silverstream, which was well and truly back, but we saw her turn of foot late, getting home in 33.79, a very impressive run, running into fourth as well. Now, my concern dropping back to the 1,000 metres is that you can't give a horse like Mad Dasser too much distance, so I'm going to be tipping it on top here. The blinkers go on Damien Oliver's ride. It's had nine starts over the 1,000 metres, six victories and three seconds. Has never finished any worse than second over 1,000 metres. And as I said, with the blinkers going on, Damien Oliver riding as well, dropping back from the 1,200 to 1,000. I think Mad Asset tips so many of the boxes that you cannot ignore this galloper. It'll be on top for me. From number 11, Silver Stream in this race, because as I alluded to, that turn of foot, devastating. The horse is two from two over the 1,000 metres as well, so you can't knock her at all. But I'm just concerned that she'll be too far back and won't be able to give a horse like Mad Ass had that much ground that we saw in the winter bottom as well. Outside of those, we know there's going to be speed from Benito and also Dawn Approach. So I think a horse like a Shining Knight, also Shidel will have plenty of speed, but Shining Knight and Fly Tego are two that will really appreciate this speed and run on. And I don't mind Fly Tego for a little bit of an each way run in this. You have a look, three starts ago, it was only been under a length by Silverstream. Meets it better in the weights here as well. Barry 11 with the 55 kilos. Got home last start in 33.28, carrying 60 kilos. That was over the 1,200 metres. So if they go hard out in front, which I am expecting, I think a horse like Fly Tego can certainly run on strongly and play a part in this race. Let's take a look at the selections. I'm going to be tipping number eight, Mad Asser, from number 11, Silverstream, number six, Shidel, and number nine, Fly Tego. Race number eight, it's Australia, race number 15 for our Singapore viewers, and it is the main event of our nine race card. It is the Tab Touch Kingston Town Classic, of course, the Group 1 event. We've got horses coming across like Magic Artist. Uh, we've also got Extra Zero, and then we've got the Lightweights uh, trying to play a part. Perfect Reflection carrying the 50 kilos, but there's plenty of horses that can win this race. The replay that we're going to take a look at has almost become the forgotten horse. Number two, Blackheart Bud in this race. A very good performance again in the railway, finishing fourth. We'll take a look at that run now. Bass straight. Here comes Big Blackheart Bar to the outside. But Good Project led them 250 to go from Hazabeel. Good Project. He went for home. Hazabeel second. Down on the inside. Machine is battling. But Chris Wallers. Good Project in front. Great result. Wins the railway. Good Project scored from Machine. So Blackheart Bart there tasted defeat for the first time this campaign. Had won its prior three starts. It was a really good performance again from Barrier 10. Didn't have a lot of options. Slots into Barrier Barrier 3 here with the 59 kilos. We know that he can carry the weight. There's no dramas at all. So I think Blackheart Bart is certainly one that you cannot ignore in this race. It has drifted a little bit in the markets early on, but I would expect Blackheart Bart with a very nice run throughout the early stages to play a part in this race. All the talk at the moment, of course, is about the magic artist, the German galloper, Damien Oliver to ride. Barrier 1 with the 59 kilos. 
You take a look at the form lines that this horse has had over Reese at Flemington. Uh, finished fourth in the Group 1 McKinnon, also fourth in the Group 1 Emirates. Now, the Emirates might not have been as strong as we've seen in, in recent years, but those Group 1s are genuine. And what we learned when buffering and also good project came across is those form lines can't be ignored. The really strong Group 1 races over Reese. So I find it very hard to go past Magic Artists here. Damien Oliver is elected to go that way. He had been offered some rides from Bob Peters as well. So I think that's another big indication that this horse is going to be very hard hard to beat. Let's try to find some horses that might be able to play a part in this race and obviously the cerise and white colours are going to be very hard to beat. Real love with Chris Parnham's ride was a really good performance again in the railway, ran on to finish seventh on that occasion. Delicacy's drawn out wide but Peter Hall takes the ride back. Now he's had group one success on her and he's told me as well that going back really suits her so with conditions to suit a lot more on this occasion, I think Delicacy is one that can certainly play a part. It was a very good run in the railway to only finish three and a bit lengths behind a good project as well so I'm not writing her off as well and all of the talk is about number 16 perfect reflection just the 50 kilos William Pike takes a ride devastating turn of foot is yet to taste defeat and I was really impressed with the victory last start in the group 3 champion Phyllis obviously missed the 1400 meter race so go from the 12 to the 16 just showed her class and with 50 kilos and the turn of foot that she has she is one that you have to pencil in I'm really excited to see the battle of magic artists with the 59 and perfect reflection with the 50 kilos as well and don't forget a horse like Blackwood, 50 kilos as well. It was a really good performance in the Group 2 Guineas, attacking the line strongly. Drawn wide again, which isn't ideal, but Stephen Parnham takes a ride, and with that light weight, I think she can certainly play a part in this race. Let's take a look at the selections, and I'm going to be tipping the class here. Number four, Magic Artist. From number 16, Perfect Reflection. Number 11, Delicacy. And number two, Black Art Bar. Final race of the day at Ascot, race number nine. It's Australia, race number 17 for our Singapore viewers. It's over the 1,200 metres, and it is a fascinating race to analyse with plenty of the favourites and early speed drawn very wide in this race. So looking forward to going through this, and if you're alive in the quaddy, there might be a little bit of value to have. Let's take a look at the replay of a last start winner in Lenience. It was a good performance, won by a length on that occasion. Tap the line strongly, and we'll have a look at that run now. From Lenience, flying raw, Lord Conrad comes to his outside. Kurganites running on at the 200. Lenience races up, goes to on a downtown trainer. Further two lengths, flying raw. Kurganites battling away, fly Tigo from the back. Lenience on a downtown train, but Lenience in front of on a downtown train and flying raw, and it's first up for Lenience. It was in a lovely position there, ridden by Jake Casey on a downtown train to set the pace, but attacked the line strongly, leniency to get the better of that galloper and win by length. It was a day that suited leaders, as we mentioned, so had plenty of favours on that occasion, but as I mentioned off the top, all of the speed in this race is drawn out wide and a lot of the class is out wide as well. So from barrier six, although this galloper has to go up and carry the 59 kilos, it's one of the better horses that's going to get a really nice run through to the early stages. So I think lenience cannot be ignored in this race. Another horse that I think certainly has to come into top four calculations and also your quaddy betting is number three, Beach Express. Now it hasn't won for 940 days, but with Clint Johnson Porter riding, carries just the 56 kilos, the blinkers go on, it gets a weight swing against some of these gallopers and it's drawn perfectly in barrier four as well. So I think if Beach Express is ever going to break that drought of 944 days or at least really be competitive and run in your top four. I think this is the race and I'd certainly be having a look at that. On a downtown train show, plenty of class last out over the 1200 metres, just beaten by lenience in the replay you saw there. But I don't think conditions are going to be suiting the leaders, so I find that on a downtown train is certainly going to have a hard time of it. Number seven, Fool's Bet, is one of the leaders that I do think can stick on and win this race. Was only beaten one and a half lengths by Shidel last start. Barrier 13, so he's going to have to do a little, little bit of work here. But with the two kilo claim to Aaron Mitchell, only carries the 56 kilos. All class this mare is, though, the four-year-old. So has a very good track and distance record. Five attempts for a victory, a second and two-thirds as well. And I think she can really run a racer in this field. So let's take a look at selections. I'm going to be putting her on top. Number seven, Fool's Bet. From number nine, Heavy Set from a wide gate. Number three, Beach Express, each way play of the race. And number one, Lenient should get a nice run as well. Seven, nine, three and one. Well, it's time now to take a look at the best bets, and I'm going to be following in the Cerise and White. Race 1, number 6, Arcadia Dream, and race 6, number 4, Ideal Image. Both won't be at huge odds, but I know our Singapore viewers like the short price William Pike Gallivers, and I think these two will be very hard to beat. They might be a nice multi for you on the weekend as well. Make sure you do follow us on social media over the weekend, at Perth Racing on Twitter. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. There'll be plenty of updates with everything going on for our Group 1 Kingston Town Classic Day. And of course, make sure you check Perth 
perthracing.com.au. The Perth Cup's still coming up, so there's plenty of chances for you to book in an event and enjoy the races here from the West. I'm Adam McGrath, hopefully we found you a couple of winners. We'll be back again next week with another edition of Box Seat. Quick and go.